One station making history every day. My sweet home, Chicago. Now, John Cass. 89. Constant sorrow all through his day. I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen trouble all my day. Who can see trouble with Lauren Cohn sitting in the studio? Lauren Cohn, John Cass. 89 WLS Lauren. Are you ready for Sunday? I'll tell you this: the the economy is terrible. Yeah. Right. The, G, the it just died basically two days ago. People are more people are out of work than ever before. The unemployment numbers are terrible. We have no credit rating. The Wall Street, although their Dow is going crazy, so all the big shots on Wall Street are making money. Kind of reminds me of like peasants and serfs. And uh, but it, but you know what we have. We have the Super Bowl breads and circuses, commercials, guys smashing each other's brains to pulp and food to eat. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained, Lord? Are you here? I is, can't wait. I'm entertained. Is that what, not why you are here? That's why I'm here. We are here to do the Super Bowl thing right. I've been cooking for a week or two. I've got yeah. stuff frozen in my freezer ready for the big party. Yeah, you had the apron on with the little puppy Very slippers. White. Very <laughs> white. You're walking around the kitchen. You know, I th- will you wipe the 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 uh, flour off your cheek? You got a little. I do. Smidge. Oh, yeah, that's little. not toothpaste. There you this go. Morning? So tell me, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. I put my favorite recipe, because I think it's okay to indulge on the Super Bowl. You know, I'm kind of a health nut, but it's okay to indulge. She's in. a, I put, okay, just admit it. You're a vegetarian and a nutritionist sitting with me. But it's I love, me crazy for a week. I love sweet potato fries. So I'm giving everybody the go-ahead to eat as many sweet potato fries on Sunday as you want, and as spicy and hot as you want them. So I put my recipe up on the WLS website. So, you know, I challenge you. Sweet potato fries, does that include frying? Bake them in olive oil. So don't call them fries. They're called sweet potato no, fries. No, it's just it's another typical, like, I go into a store and I want, you know, something tasty and they're telling me what to eat. But okay? Don't knock them till don't you call try them. Don't call them fries. Don't knock them till you try them. Call them sweet potato bakes, you know? That's not as sexy. No, it's and it's got to be sexy, especially wide. if you're going to watch the Super okay, Bowl. Okay, okay, Vladimir Putin. Right. You're going to watch, what do, what do you think? We're going to have cars, sex. Danica Patrick taking her clothes off. Every go year, daddy. Every year, Danica Patrick threatens to take her clothes off. And then they stop the commercial. My kids look at it. They're like, whoa. All the, Almost. All the teenage boys in the audience. Whoa. What are you cooking up for the big day? What's going on at the cast home? All right. I'm going to let you guys in on something. Uh, I think they put it up on the website, one mm-hmm. of the Tribune videos. You know, as some people know I'm I'm a rather amateur cook. I keep hearing this, but I haven't been invited to dinner yet. All right. It's very simple. Cass's pepper treats. They're actually a recipe I got from another big guy, <laughs> and he gave me the recipe, and they're really called Texas Dragon something, but I can't say the word on the air. Basically, you take a jalapeno pepper, you co- you cut the end off, you know, the stem end, mm-hmm. core it out. Put a mixture of chorizo and Mexican cheeses, you know, those four Mexican cheese mixed. Mm-hmm. Mix it up. Stuff the pepper, but put a half a chopped date in the tip. I like that. More s- cheese and sausage mixture, then another chopped date, then more cheese and sausage mixture, and then... Wrap it in bacon. And do you fry it or do you bake it? We don't fry. We smoke. You smoke it? You take it out onto your smoker because I'm, you know, some guys bring home puppies, you know, for their family. They keep bringing home dogs, straight dogs. <laughs> I bring home grills, okay? I've got like, I don't know, six or seven, five or six grill, grills in my You're backyard. You're your own George but, Foreman. Yeah, yeah. And um, so then you, put, you either smoke it or you, um, you know, grill it offset. Or you can bake them. You're making and me I'd hungry. And I'd say you bake about maybe 30 because people want to have those tasty pepper treats. Rich and Lombard. Hey, good morning, you two. How you doing over there? How good. you doing? Give me a recipe because I'm I'm getting hungry for the Super right, Bowl. It's, it's, 
from our fearless brother, Don Wade. He came up with it about a dozen years ago. You take a three-and-a-half to four-pound sirloin tip roast and a quart of pepperoncini peppers. You throw that in the crock pot and let it sit there and do its thing for about eight to ten hours. You get a loaf of bread and some provolone cheese. You cut the, the strings and that thing, and you're eating like a king. It's so simple. It's, it's unbelievable. A little spicy, but the meat is so tender and so juicy, and it's, it's foolproof. I'm doing that, too. Does it make a good sauce? Oh, yeah, a little bit of juice on there. You line it up on the bread. You can't to mop up the bread. Can Lauren even have a piece of bread? Lauren, are you going to have a piece of bread this weekend? I <laughs> might. So, I <laughs> might. She, I sure hope so, young lady. You know, treat yourself right out there, won't you? You deserve it. Oh, well, thanks. One other thing we need. Thanks, Rich. That's right, awesome. I'm going to weekend over there. And you know what, everybody? When you're making this recipe, I'm going to do it, too. Sirloin tip, uh, pepperoncinis, crock pot. Thanks. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to think of Don Wade. Hey, Don, if you're in Florida enjoying uh, the hot, the nice weather, we're going to be thinking of you, too, mm-hmm. and also other friends. We want to hear your here. recipe, so call us at yeah. 591-8900. But remember one thing, Lauren. You can't have a Super Bowl party unless you have plenty of libation. Yes, that is I'm true. I'm beer. with you on that. I'm saying a good, hearty red wines. Um, a little vino. Uh, you have to have whiskey. You have to have good olives for your mar- the martini. Maybe a good vodka make. tonic with, with bitters. a lime. Yeah, but that's kind of a summary. Mm, mm. Beer. Beer is always it's good. It's going to be really cold this weekend, too. So you need some comfort food while you you're watching some, the Super Bowl. You need some good uh, spirits food. to keep you warm outside when you're grilling, because I'm going to tell you some grilling stuff when we come back. But uh, I, I just I enjoy it because... I really don't watch the game. <laughs> I'm who too does? busy. You know who does? No, the majority I do. of I people do. out there I watch do. the I watch commercials. The but the commercials are the main thing. The commercials are fun. And I guess they're racist. Now we got a racist. Yeah, we commercial. got a couple of racist. What is that? Like, there's a Jamaican, a white guy who speaks with in a Jamaican, Jamaican accent, accent, trying to make everybody happy in the office. And he's a. Uh, and then, what is uh, that? So if they took a black guy and made, gave him a Jamaican accent, that would be racist. But that's if they take a white guy and give him a Jamaican accent, a Midwesterner, that's by the way. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, then the other one is uh, the Coke commercial. Have you seen that one? No, what's that? That's got an Arab man walking with a camel in the desert, and suddenly surpassing him to get to the Coke bottle is the bus filled with the cowgirls, and then there are cowboys and Mad Max on a motorcycle. Do the, do the polar bears get the Coke before the camel does? <laughs> right. Well, there's a, you take a boat uh for who you think gets the coke, and the Arab man is not on the list, and well, that, people that, are upset about that. That's definitely racist. Let the let the guy and let the Arab guy beat the uh, compete. John Cass, Lauren Cohen, eighty nine WLS. We want your Super Bowl horror stories and tips. Back after this, and away from the dinner table, I was introduced to dog meat, tough, snake meat, tougher, and roasted grasshopper. Every year in the Super Bowl, there's some kind of controversy. As you know, on the on the playing field, it's um, Ray Lewis rubbing deer antler spray all over himself, <laughs> and like in the Old Spice commercials he's in, I wonder if like six heads pop out of his shoulders. Have you ever seen those creepy Old Spice commercials? It's like Old Spice on acid, 1970s. <laughs> all of a sudden, six heads pop out of his head, out of his shoulder. It's not all and loving and singing. fun, like no, the no, Oikos no. commercials with John Stamos. Those oh, are my favorite. What are those now? Sexy John Stamos and the Oikos. You know, the more yogurt you eat, your husband, who's not so attractive, turns into John Stamos. So if I were if you were eating yogurt right now, I'd look <laughs> more like uh, John Stamos, even though we're not married. Correct. Right. Okay. Sexy cool. time. Yes, and that's how he speaks, too. <laughs> John Yanni Stamos, Yasu Yanni. Um, but then what about these other, you know, then there's the social issues, commercials, you know, oh my this, God. This, these commercials, uh, this one on Volkswagen with the Jamaican accent. Do we have some sound from that? I hate Mondays. Yeah, they're the worst. No worries, man. Everything will be all right. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, Don't fret me, brother. Sticky bun comes soon. Yeah. Wicked coffee, Mr. Jim. Julia, turn the frown the other way around. Hey, Dave, you're from Minnesota, right? Yes, I. The land of 10,000 lakes. <laughs> the Gopa State. So in conclusion, things are pretty dismal. You know what this room needs? 
a smile. And you know the uh, <laughs> the actor that plays the. Yeah. With a Jamaican accent in this, apparently yeah. has a brother-in-law that's Jamaican. He asked him, "What'd you think?" And the guy said, "I thought you were funny. I thought it was good." Has anyone? I've seen Jamaicans. There are people, you know, white Jamaicans living in Jamaica too, and they talk just like right. that. Right. All right, so I don't know. Okay, <laughs> but let's I'll get our little political correct shorts up in a knot because I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny too, and I didn't even see it. it was I just funny. listened to it. Now, my favorite. It uh, was a few years ago. Anybody out there can help me, 591-8900, the gerbil commercials. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, you're scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. This has nothing. I know where this is going, no, no, and I'm afraid is, no, I'm, I'm no, leaving the not. studio. The gerbil commercials have nothing to do with what you're thinking of, 591-8900. The gerbil commercials were shot, like somehow gerbils were shot out of cannons to a, into a wall or something. Remember, remember It was this. like some kind of dot-com craze and the gerbils were like, they would shoot them out of cannons and, and smash into things. Really? Yeah. That's it was like, like the Angry cr- Birds? Was, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but it was kind of scary. I loved it. And then um, I'll tell you the one my sons loved, and they're teenage boys, so of course, you know. Are we back know. to Danica Patrick again? No, the, no, no. This one is the Fiat commercial where the, uh, the, guy's, the guy's looking at the Fiat, and uh, what happens there? Then the uh, a beautiful Italian model starts um, talking to him. Mm. So, of course, my guys wanted, the f- wanted me to buy a Fiat. Well, that's like the one they had this time when the guy has no date for the prom, but then his dad gives him the fancy sports car, and yeah. he wants to get the sports car, he gets the girl. That's yeah. the Super Bowl this year. There you go. Well, uh, I guess we're getting some calls, but we they have to be checked. All right, Mike. Yes, good morning. How are you, man? I'm doing but- awesome, man. Uh- I just want to say real quick, God bless Don and Roma, I miss them. Yeah, we do too. And Jake, uh, too. I saw on Fox News, they had a quote from the, like, the Jamaican foreign minister. He said he loves it, he thinks it's hysterical, and he thinks everybody needs a little Jamaican in them and the world would be better. That's yeah, right, man. man. Yep. You know That's what? what he said. Mike, I, I would like to talk Jamaican. If I can't talk Jamaican, uh, Lauren, I'd like to talk Dothraki. For the uh, Super Bowl party, well, you've had all kinds of voices, John. Uh, wait, <laughs> listen. Uh, we have we have somebody on hold who was in the commercial. I can't wait to talk to them. Five nine one eighty nine hundred. John Cass, Lauren Cohn, Super Bowl issues, gerbils, what to cook in the oven, and what are you going to watch after this? Eighty nine. Come on, get happy. You guys are three minutes late. Don't be no cloud on a sunny day. Yeah, chill, Winston. Sir? Respect, boss man. <laughs> 80, boss man. 89 WLS, Lauren Cohn, John Cass. Listen, we're talking about these this controversial commercial. I'm still trying to find the gerbil ones from the Super Bowl of several years ago. I'm leaving the studio if you bring yeah. up the gerbils. No, no, I'm just bringing the polite gerbil issue. You know, <laughs> shooting them out of a cannon. And now on line two, we have Jeff who is in the Jamaican commercial, Jeff. Good morning. Hey, I'm looking at a picture of you. Is that you next to the red car in the vest? That's me, that's me next to the red car in the sweater vest. Yeah. All right. Describe it. Um, basically, I'm wearing, like, brown pants. Uh, I'm wearing a green tie. I have glasses that have no rim on the bottom, and I'm uh, just kind of a snippy guy. Okay, and that's when they pull up in the car and they start talking to you in Jamaican. Yeah, and then I'm I'm the guy who kind of chastises them about being late. This is so. When you heard this being made, and you were part of this thing, did you know that you were going to be part of a politically correct revolution with people <laughs> freaking out? Oh my goodness! Come uh, on, no, man. John, I didn't. I mean, I also want to just say I'm a big fan of yours, and I want to send out some good thoughts to Don and Roma as well. Um, no, I did Thanks. not think so. It was it was all it all kind of happened really quick. Uh, I booked the job on a Tuesday and was on a plane to L.A. the next morning, and then we um, we shot it in three days. And we had Jamaican consultants on set. Multiple really, Jamaican consultants. Did yeah. the Jamaican consultants shoot gerbils out of a cannon into a wall? <laughs> <laughs> and see, now I thought that would have been funny. No one else bought it, but no, it, it was it was. There were a lot of VW suits there. This was all. Very well made, very well planned, and when everything broke on Monday, I'm getting all these Facebook messages telling me that they're comparing it to blackface, and I'm sitting there going, you've got to be kidding me. 
No, so. there's no blackface. I mm-hmm. can't thank you enough, Jeff, for your call. Keep fighting, Mon. We'll In the be meantime, watching you Mon, on the Super Bowl. When we come back, we're going to be talking to the guy with the food truck. The salsa truck. Finally, a food truck. And all my uncles in the restaurant business want to kill this guy. And he'll be on with us, 89 WLS, when we come back. Join us today on the WL Sports pregame show. Bro, I can't believe it. Anthony Adams, the former Bear, joining us in the studio. Plus, the top five of five, you won't believe it. John Cass, Lauren Cohen, 89 WLS. Lauren. Happy Friday, John. Happy Friday. I want everybody to go to our website, learn how to make these uh, lovely, luscious, uh, indulgent uh Super Bowl Super treats. chips, whatever you're calling them, uh, the the sweet potato chips, and the Casp uh, Texas Dragon. Can't say what they are, but they <laughs> taste good with cervezas. Listen. Speaking of food. Speaking of food, my one of my favorite subjects. I can't. Why can't I lose weight? Anyway. Um, we'll talk about that next I grew week. up in the food business. Uh, I'm, as some of my readers know, I'm a former butcher, meat cutter. I worked in the food business all my Cousins and uh, uncles were in the food business. Junior chef, uh, sort of. Kind of, I like to eat. But also um, a lot of restaurants in our family. And they, you know what they pay? They pay property taxes. And they have to pay, um, have gifts for the inspectors <laughs> and things like that. And make sure the alderman's happy and get the license and all that. And uh, now we have something that they're not going to like. Mm-hmm. If they were still in the business, which they're not. It's called food trucks. And food trucks... Go ahead, Lauren. Food trucks, we've seen them around. But now, for the first time in the city, you can actually cook on a food truck. You can serve some heartier meals. And we've got someone who's going to be the first person in Chicago to have a food truck where he can serve meat and quesadillas and tortillas And all that sort of good stuff. And his name is Dan Sauls, and he's on the line with us. Dan. Dan. Hi, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks, Lauren. What's going on? Dan, how am I going to keep my uncles, Chris, Nick, uh, Dimitri, and Spiro from boiling out of their restaurants (laughs) uh, with cleavers to grab you when you park in front of their place? Well, uh, there's a a couple things that are going to keep me from being able to do that in the first place. Uh, you know, is the well publicized the rule about staying 200 feet away from a from a brick and mortar, uh, which is a restaurant um, in Chicago. So they even put on GPS trackers, and they're going to write a hefty fine if I get too close. But um, to other people who make that argument, you know, we're uh, we are the food truck. We we don't have uh, some of the same overhead as as uh, the traditional brick and mortar, but. We, uh, we're playing in both games. I'm actually building a restaurant right now, too. So. Well, so where are you going to park the truck? I want to know where you're going to be. Well, we're going to be all over Chicago. Um, we're, you know, we do the private events. We're going to go to business parks. Um, there's some, some established spots in the city. Uh, the city recently made uh, 21, I believe is the number. It could be 23, but somewhere in that range of um, designated parking spots for food trucks. How about right next to, how about right in front of that Cloud Cafe on Michigan Avenue where all those political guys yeah. got, got the deal in Millennium Park to sell $25 uh, chicken breasts <laughs> yeah. sandwiches, right? And three and $6 <laughs> water. Why don't you park yeah. it? I want you to park right there, babe. What do you think? <laughs> huh? You think the mayor let that happen? No, go uh, on. How did I you get? So. How did you get into the uh, cooking thing anyway? Tell us. How did you? How do you do? You this? know, nothing makes me happier in the world than than to cook um, and to to serve food that I you know put my heart and soul into and give it to people and and it puts a smile on my face. So um, I was a, a financial advisor not even a year ago, and um, I knew that I was still young and and had a chance to follow this dream, and I just I took the leap of faith, and here we are today. So here you are, young guy, in tough economic times, launching the first cooking food truck. What are you going to serve? What are your? What can we expect? Well, when we, we are there? the salsa truck. Um, so it's uh, it is Mexican street food, but it's gourmet. Um, Does and, that mean you have uh, a very expensive salsas? <laughs> no, no. Actually, our prices are cheap. We're going to keep things low because it's street food, and we know uh, we got to make the people happy. But um, so it's it, everything is 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 salsa centric for lack of a better phrase um you know we'll do tacos and and quesadillas every day and 
It's got to be spicy for John. John likes spicy. You can make the salsas at your, you know, on land before you go on, on the truck, Correct. right? So we work out of we work right. out of a, a kitchen, a shared kitchen. Um, and that's part of what I alluded to before. Is I'm right. trying to build one right now too. But we're we're renting out space right now um, on the near west side, and we go and. And it's a, the city knows all about this, and, and we go and we, we do all of our prep work, and we make our salsas, and, and like for instance, our carnitas needs to cook for almost a day between the, the dry rub and the you know the slow cooking. It's it's Mexican barbecue for, um, you know, for all intents and purposes. So we do a lot of our cooking at this kitchen, and then we fill up the truck, and we do our final preparations on board, and, and make it hot and fresh for uh, everyone to enjoy. It would be interesting if you uh, drive that down 26th Street and park out in front of some of the famous uh, taquerias, and, yeah. and then they, they might say, hi, Dan. Hi, yeah, Dan. How you doing? Yeah, How you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? I Because uh, that's not too far from Lumber Street and the river where people disappear. But <laughs> I need to ask you, Dan, where... Uh, um, you're the first one, the first guy to get a license. Why do you think it's taken so long well, for um, others to get that license? Yeah, it, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, I, I know. I never thought it would take this long, but it was, you know, the city put it out there. They said, you know, we're going to let you do this, but you're going to have to meet our standards. And um, they're tough standards. So we worked really hard, and, and we, you know, I, I built this truck with uh, the help of, you know, friends and, and, uh, and some great people I've met along the way and a great welder by the name of Larry Grover and he helped uh, build this this truck and um, we just had to make it code compliant and keep going back and talking to the city and they say no we don't like this you got to change it it was just a lot of back to the drawing board so who do you know <laughs> nobody come on That's the funniest Dan, Dan, I know someone. Dan come on the Chicago way come on you know he grabs <laughs> he grabs a salsa you grab a taco you know <laughs> right yeah right. And no, I, I I know what you're saying, but uh, it's it's honestly we just did this uh, the right way, and the city just wanted to to um, to get you know to get this out there. And and uh, I, there's times where I honestly wish there was somebody I could have paid off in the beginning. But. So you're gonna come by when you open up. When are you gonna? When's your first day? We're we're shooting for next Tuesday. Okay, next Tuesday. I expect you. Uh, at outside 9 o'clock WLS. outside WLS. <laughs> All right, we'll come we out and, and sample tacos. your salsas. 9 o'clock on WLS, we'll be there. <laughs> All right, man, and stay away from my pepper treats, domadas, <laughs> or any other Greek food, because I got I know people, too. I want to go too. to Dan's house for the Super Bowl. Danny, you're going to have a great Super Bowl, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you better believe it. All, All right. my friends are going to come over. They're tasting the recipes. It's going to be fun. Throw extra peppers in. Remember, that's the American need well, always good. Right. Thanks for okay. coming on. Thanks, buddy. Can't wait Thank to see you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Good luck on that. I always want to do the falafel cart. Falafel cart. Yes. And good? uh And I want to do the Dolmadis cart. Okay. John Cass, Lauren Cohn. Are we at a break? Yes, we are. Back after this. 89. Monday morning with Bruce Wolf and Dan Proft on 89 WLS. Stephen Moore of the Wall Street Journal. And we'll recap Super Bowl 47. That's Monday morning. Bruce Wolf, Dan Proft, 89 WLS. Hey, baby. You know, Lauren Cohn, John Cass, 89 WLS, we had the food truck guy on. Maybe Vladimir Putin should get some food trucks out there in Russia when he's... May, the voice and, to maybe get the, those uh, Russians to make some babies, but I'd like to see... Mr. Food Truck, who promised he was going to be with us uh, Tuesday when he opens, I'd like to see him park his truck right in front of Carmine's. Oh, on, yeah, uh, not going to happen. Carmine's on uh, Rush there and, and then see what happens because then he would be in his own salsa. Let's see, we have uh, <laughs> Sean in Elwood Park. Sean, you like the uh, food trucks, I baby? You, I want you to get that guy's information. Me and you, we put a truck, I put you on the side of it like the big boy hamburger guy. Oh, we thanks, man. Give me 700 Krusty Burgers! <laughs> We sell euros and whatnot. We'll wreck them. This is a shot to the restaurant lobby and those very same shady sons of guns that own that Carmine's Clam House you just talked about. So I like I it. I don't know they're shady. I thought they were uh, respectable businessmen who sit qu- where, you know, like a guy goes in there on a Thursday and wears a little golf jacket and just sits quietly. Yeah, like you the alderman driving the convertible Bentley with the wife that looks like the horse's head and godfather. How you that doing? One? Anyway, go on. Listen. 
So oh. I just think it's an opportunity for capitalism to give a shot because now this kid sounds nice, young. He's got the money and the time to beat it. He went back and forth. He's probably got, I would say, 140000 in that truck minimum because these are very prevalent in the West Coast and in Florida. So it's about time that we bring it out. Now, another thing is I was getting in and out of the car. I heard about your gerbil predicament, and I wanted to say it's I'd not, it's not my gerbil. Please don't phrase it that way. It's not my <laughs> gerbil predicament. I'm trying to remember. Anybody remember they shot gerbils out of, of a cannon in a, in a Super Bowl commercial? That was before it's they had angry birds. Well, I've come to the conclusion I'd rather be a gerbil in a commercial that no one can remember than one locked in a cupboard in Barney Frank's house. I'm just funny that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, let's not talk about a senator that way. But thank you very much, Sean. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed the Super Bowl because Lauren and I will. Right, Lauren? Yeah, we're cooking up all kinds of things. And if you go online, WLSAM.com or whatever That's it is, it, WLSAM.com. you're going to see the pepper treats, the, the, sweet, potato, the sweet potato bakes that chips, Sean has renamed them now. And, and everything else, and uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. More after this. Text from 630. John, what is the Greek food that's ground meat and rice rolled up in a steamed grape leaf? It's so good, and it's called Domades, another great Super Bowl treat. Yum. Lauren. That sounds good. Yeah, you can do it without. I'm coming to the cast house on Sunday. Well, yeah, we're going to, you know call what? up Betty and get an invitation at I the got, table. I'm going to have all the grills working, and we come back next uh, Monday... There's going to be Super Bowl controversy. Somebody's going to have like a, a left breast that's going to be exposed in the song, right? <laughs> There's all sorts of... Danica you know, Patrick, go Dan- daddy. <laughs> Danica Patrick's taking her clothes off. What else? So much. What's your favorite ad? What ad didn't you like? What Who offended you, like? you? What offended you? Did you even watch the game? Did the gerbils come out of the cannon? Ravens Everything. 49ers. Yeah, what did about Did any the of the game? players say anything offensive during the game like what? they did this week? <laughs> Nothing like rubbing yourself full of deer antler spray so you can play a game. <laughs> Just don't mention the gerbils anymore. Okay, I won't mention gerbils anymore. But And I don't think you can even cook them. I don't even think they're oh, tasty on a stick. I'm leaving the studio with salt now. and pepper and a little lemon, maybe. Anyway, John Cass. Oh, we got some time yet. So, yeah, so I'm going to uh, enjoy the week. And I'd also like to, um, I'm going to watch the game at my house on the big screen. Because it's going to be five degrees out. Although I'm looking outside right now and it's, you know, what, 10 below right now. And it's at least the sun's shining. I wish I had a tape. I'll tell you what I wish I had before the game. A video of the great trial of Socrates that took place Mm. last night. You can sit in your Snuggie and watch it. The Hellenic Museum put it on and Socrates, again, lost thanks to Patrick Fitzgerald who prosecuted him. And that would be a great thing. I can't wait to see that, but I'll have to wait. And Dan Webb worked pro bono. He didn't That's even right. Charge. So Dan Webb no represented... More, no more on the taxpayers. Just think, George Ryan, uh, Bill Cellini, and Socrates. There you go. Dan Webb lost all three. <laughs> Come on, Dan. What's going on? You better indict somebody in the special <laughs> special prosecutor's role that you have now. So, John Cass, Lauren Cohn, we're going to be out of here, and we'll see you next week after the ball. But I just can't quit you. One station making history every day. There is the shuttle, Vic. There Obviously is a major, a major problem. Malfunction. The policeman isn't there to create disorder. The policeman.